एवरी वन आई होप यू आर गेटिंग बेनिफिटेड बाय द सम्स ऑफ द टेक्स्ट बुक विच आई एम नाउ सेंडिंग इट टू यू थ्रू माय वीडियोस टुडे आई विल टॉक अबाउट क्वेश्चन नंबर फिफ्टी एट इन दिस क्वेश्चन वी कैन सी ए बी एंड सी आर थ्री पार्टनर्स विद अ प्रॉफिट शेयरिंग रेशियो ऑफ फाइव इज टू थ्री इज टू टू D is admitted on first of April, and the new profit sharing ratio becomes four is to three is to one is to two. So we have the old ratio, and we have the new ratio, and now we'll calculate the sacrificing ratio. If you see very carefully, five plus three plus two is ten, so the denominator in the first case is ten, and four plus three plus one plus two is also ten, so the denominator of the new ratio is also ten. So A's old ratio is five by ten, and the new ratio is four by ten. Therefore, the sacrifice is one by ten. Similarly, for B, there is no sacrifice because the old ratio was also three by ten. The new ratio is also three by ten, so no sacrificing. And for C, the sacrifice is two by ten minus one by ten. Therefore, one by ten. Therefore, A and C are both sacrificing equally. One is to one. Now let us move on to the next part of the question where we will talk about the valuation of goodwill. The goodwill of the firm is to be valued at four years purchase of the average super profit of the last three years. Now, whenever we are given this concept of super profit, we will use the formula average profit minus normal profit. And in this question. both of them are given to us and we don't have to calculate the average profit or normal profit generally they are not given and we have to calculate but in this question both are given so we'll directly do the calculation so you can see the calculation super profit is average profit minus normal profit 60000 which is the average profit Minus normal profit thirty six thousand, which gives us twenty four thousand. So twenty four thousand is the super profit. How many years purchase is given to us? Four years. So twenty four thousand into four gives us ninety six thousand. See ninety six thousand is the value of the goodwill of the firm. So what will be D share of goodwill? Ninety six thousand into two by ten, which is coming as nineteen thousand two hundred. Now the question very clearly states that D only brings one third of the goodwill in cash. So nineteen thousand into one by three, six thousand four hundred has been brought in cash, and the rest amount twelve thousand eight hundred will be shown through the treatment of D's current account. So in this case, the goodwill is partially brought in. One third, which is brought in, six thousand four hundred, and two third, which has not been brought in, that is twelve thousand eight hundred, will be transferred to the D's current account. After doing the calculation of sacrificing ratio, which has come to one is to one, and the calculating goodwill of the firm and D share of goodwill, now let us start with. the journal entries as the question has asked us to prepare journal entries and capital account and the opening balance sheet now here we can see very clearly that d has brought in a capital of 1 lakh but has been able to bring only 1/3 of his share of goodwill the share of goodwill of d has been calculated as 19200 and 1/3 of that is 6400 so let's get started but before that we should do the internal journal entry we can see in the balance sheet we have a general reserve of 40000 so this is the first journal entry we should start with i have already told you that we should first finish with the internal journal entries and then only we should go with the out other ones so first journal entry general reserve account debit 40000 to a's capital 20000 to b s capital 12000 to c s capital 8000 this is written in the old profit sharing ratio 5 is to 3 is to 2 always remember if there is any accumulated profit or loss that will be distributed only among old partners in their old profit sharing ratio now the second journal entry is for the capital and the part of the goodwill that is 1/3 of the goodwill brought in by the new partner who is d So bank account debit one lakh six thousand four hundred. D's capital account one lakh to premium for goodwill six thousand four hundred. 
Now the next journal entry is premium for goodwill account debit 6400 to D's current account because D could not bring in two third of the goodwill which accounted for 12800 as has been explained in the previous slide to A's capital 9600 to C's capital 9600 as these two partners are the sacrificing partners. So I repeat this journal entry again premium for goodwill account debit 6400 D's current account 12,800 to A's capital account 9,600 to, to C's capital account 9,600 because the sacrificing ratio was equal. Now we will do the journal entries for the revaluation. The first revaluation is plant and machinery is valued at 1,20,000. Now in the old balance sheet we can see that the value of plant and machinery was 1,50,000 and it has gone down by 30,000. So it will be shown in the debit side of the revaluation account. The next one provision for doubtful debt is maintained at 5% on debtors. The value of debtors is given to you as 60,000 and 5% 5 of 60,000 would be 3,000 but there is a provision of 1,200 which is already given. So the provision will increase by 1,800 and that will also be shown in the debit side of the revaluation account. The third revaluation value of land and building was appreciated by 25%. Now the value goes up by 25%. You can see very carefully the value of land and building is given as 2 lakh and 25% of 2 lakh is 50,000 that will appear in the credit side of the revaluation account. Furniture has depreciated by 10%. The value of furniture given in the question is 30,000. So it is go going down by 3,000. And the last revaluation is an unprovided contingent liability of 4,000 for damages has matured for payment. So there is an increase in the liability. And as there is an increase in liability, it will also go to the debit side of the revaluation account. We could have merged the first and the third journal entry but I have chosen to show it separately and the first journal entry is revaluation account debit 34,800 to plant and machinery 30,000 to debtors 1,800 to furniture 3,000. This is the decrease of all the assets which has been shown to you that is revaluation account 34,800 to plant and machinery 30,000 to debtors 1,800 to furniture 3,000. Next journal entry is land and building to revaluation because the value of land and building is increasing by 25%. So land and building 50,000 to revaluation 50,000. The next journal entry is revaluation account debit 4,000 to contingent liability. Repeat again revaluation account debit to contingent liability as the value of contingent liability is increasing. So 4,000, 4,000. Now see very carefully the amount in the credit side of the revaluation account is 50,000 and the amount in the debit side of the revaluation account is 38,800. How did I get 38,800? 34,400 and 4,000 is 38,800. That results into a profit of 11,200 which is shown by the last journal entry that is revaluation account debit 11,200 to A's capital 5,000. 600 to B's capital 3,360 uh, to C's capital 2,240. I hope you have understood how we have calculated this. This has been calculated in the old profit sharing ratio that is 5 is to 3 is to 2. So 11,200 has been divided by 10 and multiplied by 3 to give 5,600 divided by 10 multiplied by 3 to give us 3,360 and divided by 10 multiplied by 2 to give us a value of 2,240. So this is how we have got the profit on revaluation which has been transferred to the partner's capital account. In this slide, I talk about the capital account even though a new partner D has come in 
and there is only one entry for it so i have chosen to show the capital account of a b and c it is advisable to show the capital account of a b c and d all but since the calculation is done for a b and c only so i have concentrated on the capital account of a b and c you could obviously add another column both in the debit side and the credit side as d and there will be only one entry in both the debit side and the credit side now please see the capital balances of a and b given in the question a has a capital balance of 3 lakh b has a capital balance of 1 lakh 50000 and c has a overdrawn capital of 20000 which has been shown in the debit side of the capital account as two balance brought down first we will concentrate on the treatment of general reserve which was given in the question as 40,000 and has been distributed among the partners in the ratio of 5 is to 3 is to 2. So you can see 20,000, 12,000 and 8,000 respectively. Now the next entry is for the premium for goodwill which was brought in by the new partner D that is one third of the goodwill which was brought in by the new partner D okay that was 6400 and it was divided among it was divided among A and C equally so 3200 3200 and the two third of goodwill which was not brought in that is 12,800 has been distributed to A and B so by D's current account 6,400 and 6,400. After that we have got a profit and revaluation 5,600 to A, 3,360 to B and 2,240 to C. After we have posted all these entries as 3,35,200 for A. Now let us add for B. 1,50,000 plus 12,000 plus 3,360. That gives us 1,65,360 which is there in the credit side. And the debit side balance will also be 1,65,360 because there is nothing in the debit side to take care of so 1,65,360 is the balance of B now C had an overdraft balance of 220,000 and in the credit side of C's capital you can see general reserve 8,000 premium for goodwill 3,200 D's current account 6,400 and revaluation is 2,240 if you add all this if you add all this you get a figure of 19,840 I repeat if you add all these four figures you get a figure of 19,840 therefore the balance still there is in overdrawn by 160 I repeat the balance is still overdrawn by 160 and we know that the new partner has brought in a capital of 1 lakh if you wanted we could have added one more column both in the debit side and the credit side showing this 1 lakh entry. Now we have come to the last part of the question which is the preparation of the balance sheet as at 1st April 2020 when D was admitted. Now we will concentrate on the preparation of the balance sheet based on the revaluation and the capital account. The first one will concentrate from the asset side and will start with land and building which was there 2 lakh in the old balance sheet and the value of land and building has appreciated by 25%. So add appreciation 50,000, outer column 2 lakh 50,000. Plant and machinery is given as 1 lakh 50,000 and it was revalued to 1 lakh 20,000 that means there is a depreciation of 30,000. Furniture was depreciated by 10%. Now 10% of 30,000 is 3,000. So furniture 30,000 minus 3,000 outer column 20, uh, 27,000. Now let us see debtors. The value of debtors is 60,000. There is a provision for doubtful debt 5% of debtors. So 60,000 less provision for doubtful debts 3000 outer column 57000 there is no adjustment for stock so the value of stock remains 70000 in the outer column now cash at a bank 
we have a cash at bank balance of 13200 and the new partner had brought in 1 lakh as capital and 6400 as one third share of goodwill so that has been added together that is 13200 plus 1 lakh Plus six thousand four hundred to give a value of one lakh nineteen thousand six hundred. Next, D's current account. This is the goodwill not brought in by the new partner twelve thousand eight hundred. And after preparing the capital account, we have seen that C has a negative balance. That is a overdrawn balance of one sixty. so these are the items which are there in the asset side of the balance sheet that is land and building 2 lakh 50000 plant and machinery 1 lakh 20000 furniture 27000 debtors 57000 stock 70000 cash at bank that is 1 lakh 19600 and we have D's current account twelve thousand eight hundred and C's capital account one sixty. The total comes to six lakh fifty six thousand. The total comes to six lakh fifty six thousand five sixty. After completing the asset side, let us now concentrate on the liability side of the balance sheet, which basically has creditors fifty two thousand. There is outstanding expenses that is contingent liability for outstanding expenses four thousand and the capital accounts of three partners that is A, B, and D. Why? Because C has a overdrawn capital one sixty which has already been written in the asset side. So the capital of A after preparing the capital account we had got three lakh thirty five thousand two hundred. For B it is one lakh sixty five thousand three sixty and for D it is one lakh. So if you take a total of these Three figures. You are getting a figure of six lakh five hundred and sixty. Now six lakh five hundred and sixty plus fifty two thousand plus four thousand gives us a balance of six lakh fifty six thousand five sixty. This concludes sum number fifty eight of the revaluation account. Always remember that whenever we are doing revaluation account, it's very very important to understand the question. Sometimes you are given that the plant and machinery is undervalued or overvalued. This is a very very important term. Undervalued or overvalued. If it is overvalued, that means the balance sheet figure is given more, and we have to reduce it. If it is said it is undervalued, that means the balance sheet figure is given less, and we have to increase the value. Keep watching my channel. Don't miss my videos. I'll soon come with more sums from the admission chapter.